Now, very powerful. Our nuptial hour draws on apace. For happy days brings in another moon, but oh, methinks how slow this old moon is. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bow, new bent in heaven, shall behold the nights of our solemnities. Go, Philistrate, stir up the Athenian youth, the merriments. Oh, I wooed thee with my sword, winning thy love and doing the injuries. But I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with reveling. Happy be Theseus, renowned Duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Well, a vexation come I with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Then forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man had my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart, turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. My gracious duke, be it so, she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. She is mine, I may dispose of her. It shall be either unto this gentleman or to her death, according to our law. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid. To you, your father should be as a god. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. <laughs> in himself, he is. But in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father look but with my eyes. Rather your eyes with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made so bold, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death, or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires, know of your youth, examine well your blood, whether, if you yield not to your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun. So I grow, so live, so die, my lord. Take time to pause. By the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me. Upon that day, I had to prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius, as he would, or on Diana's altar to protest for I austerity and single life. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield thy crazed title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Scores for Lysander, true. He hath my love. And what is mine, my love shall render him. And she is mine, and all my right of her I do estate unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he. My fortune is in every way as fairly ranked, if not advantage as Demetrius's, which is more, I am beloved of beauty as Hermia. Why should I not then prosecute my right? And Demetrius, all vouch it to his head, made love to Nadar's daughter Helena, and won her soul, and she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess, that I have heard so much, and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof. But being overfull of self-affairs, my mind did lose it. But come, Demetrius, and come, Aegeus. I have some private schooling for you both. As for you, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, else the law of Athens yields you up. Come, my father. What cheer, my love? With duty and desire, we follow you. How now, my love? Why is it she so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? The light for want of rain, which I could well betime them from the tempest of my eyes. I mean, for aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or history, the course of true love did never run smooth, but either it was different in blood or- Oh, hell! To choose love by another's eyes! Or else it stood upon the choice of friends! Oh, spite! 
right. Too old to be engaged. Too young. Hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her home remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. And to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. And there, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee. Thou lovest me, then. Steal forth tomorrow night from thy father's house, and in the wood where I did meet with thee once with Helena, there will I stay for thee. Thy good life, Sander. I swear to thee, by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow and golden head, by all the vows that ever men broke, in number more than ever woman spoke, in that place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow, truly, Will I meet with thee? Keep promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. God, speak fair, Helena. Whither away? Call you me fair? That fair, again, unsay. Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair! Sickness is catching. Oh, we're favor so yours, but I catch fair, Hermia, ere I go. My ear should catch your voice. My eye, your eye, my tongue should catch your tongue's sweet melody. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius's heart. I frown on him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns would teach my smile I such skill. Give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. And the more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty. Would that fault were mine. Take comfort, lad. He no more shall see my face. My Sander and myself shall fly this place. Helen, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night at a time when lover's flight doth still conceal, through Athens' gates have we devised to steal. And in the wood, where often you and I, upon faint primrose beds, were wont to lie, emptying our bosom of our counsel sweet. There, my well, Sander and myself shall meet. And then. From Athens, turn away our eyes and seek new friends and strange companies. Oh, farewell, sweet point fellow. Pray thou for us. Good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Oh. Keep word, Lysander. We must starve our sight from lover's food till morrow, deep midnight. I will, my army. As you and him, Demetrius don't on you, Helena. Adieu. How happy some or other some can be. Through Athens I am thought as fair as she, but what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind. And therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. As waggish boys and game themselves forswear, so the boy love is perjured everywhere. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. And when this hail some heat from Hermia felt, so we dissolved, and showers of oaths did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But herein mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. 